The NBA Jam Arcade 1-Up Machine is coming very soon, but it looks like it might have a large surprise attached to it. A random third-party stealth drop happened today on the Nintendo Switch for a pretty big game that's actually pretty good. And finally, Platinum Games talks Bayonetta 3 and gives an update on it and talks about other ongoings within their company. What's going on guys? I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So when it comes to sports, the NBA is my favorite sport. I grew up watching the NBA and I love the NBA. I love basketball. So when it was announced that Arcade 1UP was doing an NBA Jam cabinet, I, well, I absolutely lost my mind. It seemed like something that probably wasn't going to happen. Of course, sports games have a lot of things tied in with licensing of all the players involved in them so I didn't think this was going to be a reality but now it is a reality I'm showing you guys some floor footage from CES that my buddy cool toy took there'll be a link in the description to his channel make sure you guys go check him out but obviously this machine was done with a lot of time love and care put into it the graphics on it look absolutely amazing they pretty much got most of the roster that was available in the original NBA Jam to be in this version of NBA Jam at the current time of this video it seems like there are only three playable characters that are not available in this version of NBA Jam, and they're currently working to get more of these players involved in it so that they can have the full main roster within the game. Of course, aside from NBA Jam, you also have NBA Jam Tournament Edition and NBA Hang Time, which were all really fun basketball games that released in the arcade. So I'm really on board with this system. I'm really excited for this system, but it seems like this might actually have a bit more of a surprise than a lot of us were anticipating. A video went up yesterday by a YouTube channel named Toycade, who I was admittedly unfamiliar with. I will have a link to his video in the description box down below. Please make sure you guys go check out that video because this is some really interesting investigative work. Now, Arcade 1UP has been teasing that there is going to be some sort of surprise with the NBA Jam Arcade cabinet. Now, of course, they are doing some different things. There's like a light up marquee and a light up uh, game deck as well with this system. So the game deck light up is obviously a new addition to the Arcade 1UP lineup of systems, but it looks like this tease may be even bigger. And it looks like Michael Jordan, his airness, the greatest basketball player of all time. Yes, he's better than LeBron. Go ahead and argue it out in the comments section down below. I don't care because MJ is better than LeBron, but it looks like Michael Jordan may actually be in this game. Now, of course, Michael Jordan was not in the original NBA Jam because of licensing things. Michael Jordan decided to do Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City for the Super Nintendo for, I don't know, some strange reason. That game wasn't really all that great. It was an action adventure game where you play as Michael Jordan. But then, of course, Shaq did Shaq Fu as well. So who am I to disagree? Secure the bag, folks. Secure the bag. But, of course, Michael Jordan and NBA Jam would be a huge deal. Now, they are doing some things as far as the original source code is concerned when it comes to NBA Jam. Obviously, you're going to have to change some things when you are doing things like having to remove players who may not be willing to be in this version of NBA Jam. But Toycade basically made a discovery that it looks like Michael Jordan could be in NBA Jam. And really, it's based on a cumulative effort of things and one pick. Picture. Now, looking at this picture, and yes, we're going to get into a little bit of basketball nerdum here. I thought I could debunk this. I thought I have the riddle solved, and this is not Michael Jordan. I thought I had it figured out. Now, of course, the players are playing in red uniforms, so that really leads you to believe that this could be the Chicago Bulls, but I thought maybe it was the Atlanta Hawks. Looking at the person tipping the ball off, I thought it was Steve Smith for the Atlanta Hawks, but then researching it, I quickly realized that Steve Smith was not in NBA Jam Vanilla, the team for the Atlanta Hawks was Stacey Augman, Dominique Wilkins, and Mookie Blaylock. And I thought Mookie Blaylock was potentially the bald guy in the background. So now I don't know about this. I think this could actually be Michael Jordan. Of course, Michael Jordan is the talk of the town right now with his series that's going on right now on ESPN. But all I know is if MJ is in this game, that is going to be absolutely amazing. That would be the first time that he is in NBA Jam Vanilla. And of course, I think it would be a huge deal. Arcade 1UP machines are selling very well. Well, they have reported that over 1 million units have been sold worldwide, so they're doing very well. I, of course, enjoy these systems, but yes, it looks like Michael Jordan could potentially be in this game, and I'm very, very excited for that. Make sure you guys go check out Toycade's video in the description box down below. He did a very good job researching this, and of course, check out my buddy Cool Toy as well, who provided the footage for this video to sort of show you guys something so you're not just looking at my ugly face. But do you want Michael Jordan in NBA Jam? Because, well, I sure as hell do. Next up, Stealth Drops on the Nintendo 
Nintendo Switch are something that we should definitely start to be expecting. Of course, there's been lots of rumors and speculation about Nintendo Directs. We, of course, have talked about this over the past week or so, but basically, it looks like the June Nintendo Direct is not happening. There could be one in late summer, or it might not happen until later in the fall as far as the new Nintendo Direct is concerned. Because of this, Nintendo has actually been telling third-party publishers to go ahead and talk about your games, even if they're big games, on your own time. Talk about these games, showcase these games, because it looks like there won't be a proper Nintendo Direct. Now, of course, we dove deeper into that situation a few days ago on the channel. I don't necessarily think it's a problem. Some people do. That's okay. It's the internet. People can have different opinions, and we all like each other at the end of the day. But today, a big third-party game dropped on the Nintendo Switch with the stealth drop, and maybe this was sort of announced as coming to the Nintendo Switch? I must have missed that announcement, because I actually played this game on the Xbox One pretty recently because it was available on Game Pass, and I wanted to check it out. And that is Journey to the Savage Planet. Now, this game really just sort of caught my eye because of the visual style of the game. 505 Games published this title. It's a bit of a Metroidvania in a first-person perspective with some very wacky comedy that goes goes into it. The comedy is a bit hit or miss, I will admit, but I do like what this game brings to the table. It's sort of an action platformer. There are first person shooter elements in it as well as you are defeating enemies on this savage planet. And it's just a really fun game. It's a really visually pleasing game. And the Metroidvania elements make it actually very interesting because you're continually wanting to progress to upgrade your character. The game actually has uh, online play as well, where you can team up with a friend and play through the story mission online. There's secrets within the world to check out. I I really enjoyed this game. I played it for a few hours on my Xbox One, and I thought this would be a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch. And well, it is a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch because it is stealth dropping on the system today digitally. Now, there will be a physical version of the game that will be releasing sometime towards the end of June as well. There is no word if there will have to be an additional download for that game or anything, but I really like this game. Now, there is one little area of concern that I have with Journey to the Savage Planet in that, while we haven't seen any footage of the Nintendo Switch version, version of the game and 505 games has published other games on the Nintendo Switch but one of them that sticks out in my mind is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and well Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on the Nintendo Switch was just not a very good and well done port so I am sort of questioning the quality of this game but as far as the core game itself is concerned it's actually a really fun game and I think a game that really fits well on the Nintendo Switch now this game should be available for $29.99 by the time you're watching this video and of course there is the fact that well you can play it on Xbox Game Game Pass if you have an Xbox One. Maybe if this video gets a bunch of likes and you get a bunch of comments and a bunch of views on here and you're like, hey, review this version of the game so we can know if it sucks or not, maybe I will go ahead and play it. But yes, an interesting third party stealth drop today and I hope to see more of these in the future when it comes to the Nintendo Switch games because, well, it's just exciting stuff. And finally, a recent interview that was done with Platinum Games gave two really interesting pieces of information. One of them being about Microsoft's potential acquisition of Platinum Games, and one of them being about Bayonetta 3. First off, let's talk about the Microsoft acquisition of Platinum Games. Now, this is something that has been heavily rumored for many, many years. Of course, one of the reasons for this is Microsoft doesn't really have any sort of foothold in Japan. When it comes to the Xbox brand in Japan, nobody really cares about it. So Microsoft is always looking for ways to sort of expand that region and make the Xbox brand something that the Japanese consumer base cares about. And of course, Platinum Games is pretty big in Japan. They are a Japanese-based company. A lot of these rumors were scaling from Scalebound. Scaling from Scalebound. Oh, that's funny how that worked out. But of course, Scalebound was going to be a huge game that was being done for the Xbox One and that was being done by Platinum Games. And then, well, it just kind of went away. That partnership completely fell apart. But people still thought that Platinum Games and Microsoft could be working on something else. Well, in this interview, Mr. Inaba actually had to say the following about the Platinum Games acquisition via Microsoft. I did read some rumors about Xbox wanting to purchase Platinum Games and I thought people on the internet write the craziest stuff because that conversation has not come to our doorstep. That said, we're not Microsoft, so we don't know what happens behind their doors. We, do, we don't know if they had any thoughts about it, possibly. So really, this shouldn't come as a huge surprise to anyone. I always thought that Microsoft purchasing Platinum Games just really didn't make sense. Obviously, Platinum Games has a good working relationship with Nintendo and even by extent with Sony. We, of course, saw the wonderful 101 just get recently released digitally for the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and Steam. But I do think it is interesting that this situation never really occurred. I think that Microsoft and Platinum Games don't really have the greatest relationship. I think Scalebound did sort of hurt that relationship. And now, of course, you're seeing 
and Platinum Games getting into the independent publishing thing, so that's something that will never happen. But of course, the more interesting topic from this conversation was the fact of Bayonetta 3. Now, Platinum Games has done some games on the Nintendo Switch. Of course, the Bayonetta 1 and 2 collection came over to the Nintendo Switch. Bayonetta 2 was a Wii U exclusive title as well. And of course, we recently got Astral Chain, which seemed to sell very well. It sold over a million copies worldwide, and it was a really fun game. I really enjoyed it, but many people were anticipating Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta 3 was, of course, teased at the Video Game Awards 2017, and much like Metroid Prime 4, you haven't heard anything about it since. Now, evidently, some people were concerned that this game was potentially canceled or something like that, and Mr. Hideki Kamiya had to say the following about the development of Bayonetta 3. I'm on Twitter, so I see a lot of comments every day. I'm happy that there's still anticipation for the title, but one thing I would like to address is the trend I'm seeing, that which is people starting to ask if the game has been canceled. I want you guys to take any concerns you have like that and throw them out the window immediately, because we are still hard at work on it and it hasn't been canceled by any means. Please look forward to it. Now, I definitely never thought that Bayonetta 3 was canceled. I just thought it might have been in a bit of development hell. But really, this may give some sort of indication that Bayonetta 3 could potentially be a 2020 title. Of course, Nintendo, like we've said a million times before, is doing different things with Nintendo Directs as far as the rest of the year is concerned. And really, we don't know much about Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch beyond July now, but it seems like Nintendo is talking about games a few months before release now. So could Bayonetta 3 be a big holiday title for the Nintendo Switch? You know, maybe. Maybe the Paper Mario and the Origami King we had never even heard about. We never even saw a, you know any sort of screenshots or trailer for it. And now all of a sudden that game is coming out within two months. So obviously Nintendo is very good at keeping their cards close to their hand. And since this is a somewhat collaborative effort between Nintendo and Platinum Games for Bayonetta 3, obviously Nintendo can keep secrets. So I think this game could potentially be a 2020 title. I never thought this game was canceled, but it is nice to see that progress is going along with this game. I guess progress is also going along with Metroid Prime 4 and maybe Shin Megami Tensei 5. You remember Shin Megami Tensei 5 because, well, a lot of people don't, but definitely some encouraging words to hear and some good stuff coming out of Platinum. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know everything you think in the comment section down below. MJR LeBron, should I check out Journey to the Savage Planet on the Nintendo Switch? And Bayonetta 3, are you looking forward to it? And of course, Microsoft not purchasing Platinum Games because, well, I don't think that was ever in the cards. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. We took a look at the new NES and Super Nintendo games for the Nintendo Switch Online yesterday. I raged about Ryan because, well, Rygar kind of tricked me. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.